Hello and welcome to my cybersecurity training course for beginners. Today's topic is data loss protection or what's commonly referred to as DLP. Working in cybersecurity, you will hear the term DLP quite often. So let's find out what DLP means. So DLP is a set of tools or processes designed to protect an organization's sensitive data. I'll walk you through what a successful DLP program looks like. So step number one classify the data. So the organization wants to protect sensitive data. So the first step is to really define what's, what does sensitive data mean to an organization. This will be different. So a sensitive data for a hospital may be patient data. For a bank, it might be credit card number. But for the Ministry of Defense, it might be strategic information or weapons information. So really, this activity commonly referred to as data classification of information or information classification falls under the broad umbrella of data governance. This is the first step and this is a prerequisite to any successful data loss protection program. Step number two, understand where your data is. So data exists in two states, data in transit and data at rest. Data in transit, or what we refer to sometimes as data in motion, is really the state where you're transferring data from one location to the other. An example of that would be you attaching um, documents or data in an email and send it to someone else, whether that's inside your organization or outside your organization, copying some data to a USB stick or even moving data to a shared drive or a cloud instance. So this is data in motion. Data at rest is a place where you store your data. So for example, um, a database is an example of data at rest. Um, a SAN storage or a network shared storage is an example of data at rest. Now, when, we, when you map out all your data, you need to factor in everything. So this includes paper, sticky notes, documents, all of that. So this will depend on your organization and the nature of the work that you do. So don't, that, don't just think in terms of IT and, and hard drives, think in terms of information. So include, this includes everything, even the information that some of your employees may share on social media. The third step in your DLP program is to protect the data. I'll walk you through four ways that you can achieve that. The first one is encryption. So you need to look at encryption for data both at rest and in transit. Now encryption level and where the encryption should be applied, it depends on your organization's policy, on your information security policy and your encryption standard. For example, what's acceptable for the Ministry of Defense is different than the level of encryption that's acceptable for a non-for-profit organization. Um, depends on the first step that you've done, which is data classification. Should you encrypt only sensitive data or should you encrypt everything? All of this rationale should come from your policies, from workshops with senior management. So this forms an important part of your DLP program is to define all of those guidelines and be clear on where encryption should be applied and what level of encryption should be applied as well. The second way to protect data is through policies end user policies, acceptable user policies, even clear disk policies and social media policies are examples of policies that you should implement as part of your DLP program. These are very important. Um, data leakage can come from someone leaving an important document on their desk and leaving the office. Someone else might see it and take advantage of it. Uh, it can happen when someone shares important information on social media. There are many, many popular cases that you can look up online of people inadvertently sharing something about a merger or an acquisition on their social media and jeopardizing the whole organization. So policy is an important part of your, inf of your data loss protection program. The third way to protect your data is through people. So education and awareness can go a long way with a data loss protection program. You need to make sure that people and employees, contractors of the organization really understand the policies that you implemented. They know their roles and responsibilities. They know how to classify the data. They actually understand what sensitive data is because at the end of the day, it's up to the employee to classify the data in so many instances. So people really are your first line of defense. The fourth and final way is a commercial DLP solution. And I left it to the end because if you've watched the video up until now, you will understand that the success of any commercial DLP solution depends on how well you implemented all the previous steps. So commercial DLP solution now come, can they can come from a mail gateway solution where they can offer you DLP as a service, your cloud solutions provider. I know Microsoft Office 365 have the option for you to enable a DLP. 
so these are technologies that you can take advantage of all right i hope you enjoyed this video data loss protection is a very complicated topic and organizations often fail in implementing them uh, i try to take you through a high level description of it please subscribe to my channel to see more of those educational video and leave a comment below if there is any topic that you'd like to learn about i'll make a video about it